This video is gonna have a ton of Popcraft Studios hit topics. It's gonna have new SCPs as superheroes. It's gonna have new mech armors. It's gonna have me finally drawing narrators people have been wanting me to draw. I mean, not Terran or Astra, but I promise they're coming eventually. But for anyone who doesn't watch every video on this channel or who's never seen an episode before, which by the way, this is a really weird one to jump in on, but should still be fun, let me give a little bit of context for what's going on in the story coming up. I have two new popular series on this channel. One is turning SCPs into superheroes, and the other is taking famous animated characters and turning them into suits of mech armor. Both of those series have their own distinct narrators, and they both exist in the same universe. And the narrator of the mech armor episodes is old Benny Shop. A lot of people think he's the best narrator to ever come across this channel, and I think I might have to agree. Agreed. So lots of people wanted to see an original short story with Benny, and I was happy to oblige. But there was one more piece that I wanted to add into this puzzle, which is the main characters from the very first original short story episode I ever did on this channel, Biomech Kayla, about a girl who meets and gets a sentient mechanical armored enhancement named Charlie. And together they jump across the multiverse going on all kinds of different adventures. So I thought it'd be really fun for a Benny Sharp original short story to tie all of those things together, and I think it ended up working out pretty well for this episode. But I suppose you can all decide that. I think I've explained enough, everything else should come up from context in the episode, and we can get right into it. Let's go! Hit like, if you want. Subscribe, if you feel like. But either way, enjoy the show. Now this is flippin' ridiculous. I've seen regular Ikeas with more security than this. Benny Sharp spoke far too loudly as he leaned up against the wall of what looked like a fenced-off and run-down old furniture store, though its looks were deceiving, and Benny knew that was true. He was standing 25 feet away from two security guards, who were the only people between him and the entrance. You know you clowns ain't fooling nobody with your dollar store cop outfits. Any bum with a head could tell you're a bunch of foundation goons. Benny chuckled to himself, still far too loud to be sure that they wouldn't hear him, but at least he was sure they couldn't see him. He was wearing bits of his own tech, including hover boots and, more importantly, a cloaking chest plate that made him completely invisible. But it didn't make him any quieter. Alright Billy, hope you enjoyed your meatballs, cause it's time to bust you out of there. Benny's stakeout had only lasted five minutes, but he already deemed he knew all he needed to to get his finest mech armor and storm the facility. But just as he was about to hover off, a quiet, sleek black car pulled up to the gate. It entered the nearly empty parking lot. Out from the back stepped two cybernetically enhanced guards, each holding back the arms of a young woman who was thrashing around trying to kick and headbutt her captors. You've got no right to do this! If any of you freaks lay a single finger on Charlie, I swear I'll find a way to nuke this whole dimension. Then he chuckled. Dang, this kid's got fire in her. I wonder what she's in for. Then another woman stepped out of the driver's seat and sparked a memory in Benny. Hey, look at that! That lady who's got a bit of a man's voice who always asks too many questions. I remember her. The tall, stone-faced woman had come around Benny's mech-making garage, asking about some tech that he'd built for a Foundation-registered hero by the name of Mecha Kane. But Benny had pretended not to know anything. He didn't have the cleanest hands in the world, but he never sold out a customer. The woman's name was Abigail Apaquash, which he only remembered because he'd made some snarky comment after she left about her name sounding like Apple Squash, which hadn't been remotely funny, but had him rolling on the ground laughing at his own joke. <laughs> apple Squash, yeah. Well, it looks like they gave old Apple Squash a promotion to Task Force Leader or something, huh? He said regarding the Foundation militant gear that she now wore. The group all marched towards the door, with the girl still thrashing and trying to get away. Just before they all could enter the building, a mass of red water appeared and swirled in the air next to them, until it formed the shape of a human, carrying a shamble of intriguing, writhing tech. What on the beautiful blue marble is that thing? Benny said, referring to the machine. He knew who the red mass of liquid was that was carrying it. It was a Foundation Hero 354, named Red Egress, who had some kind of portal or teleportation powers Benny couldn't fully remember the specifics of. But in his 20 years of building mech armors and weapons, he'd never seen anything like the flailing machine in its hands. The girl started thrashing harder. Charlie! Charlie, are you okay? The machine lashed out at the red being, unable to free itself. Yeah, I'm fine, Kayla. I mean, I'm not fine. I don't like being separated from you, but it seems like your species always answers I'm fine whenever they're asked how they're doing, even if they're not feeling so good, so I feel like that's what I'm supposed to say here too. But I can't get this red pool person to let me go. A limb of the Tex being shifted into a blue glowing cannon and fired right into red egress. 
The blast shot straight through her with no effect, but struck the pavement behind and exploded, creating a massive crater. Shrapnel bounced off Benny, but he barely noticed. He was too mesmerized by this machine. Well done, Red Egress, Abigail said coldly, but we need to keep these two apart. Take the creature back to Site-19 and store it with the previous sample for study. Oh, not on my sparkly silver watch, you don't. That thing's mine. That time, Benny didn't even bother concealing his words. All the Foundation figures looked in his direction and, of course, saw nothing. But Benny shot through the air on his hover boots and snatched the machine from Red Egress. Whoa, what's happening? This is fun, but weird. Oh, Kayla! Kayla, I don't know what's going on, but I'll come back and get you, I promise. I probably shouldn't have told your kidnappers that. That's a bad move on my part, but I swear I'm coming back and I'm gonna get you somehow. Abigail tore a stun stick from her side and struck it at the invisible Benny's leg. It hit him, but did nothing to his tech. And as soon as Benny had grabbed onto the fast-talking machine, it too had been cloaked and disappeared. The guards fired blindly into the air as Benny shot off into the night with his new mechanical buddy. All right, you beautiful little machine. What are you and how can I make 50 more of you, huh? Benny had flown back to the van he'd parked a few blocks away. Inside was a mess of tools and tech and a beautiful mech armor that was the only thing in the van without a speck of grime or dirt on it. Well, mister, I'm a biomech named Charlie and there's a lot of stuff I could tell you about me, like how you can't build one of me because we evolved organically and are actual beings, though we are machine-based life forms. But I don't think I have any time for this because I really need to get Kayla back and while I appreciate you getting me away from that red guy, I still need to find out a way to rescue Kayla from those people. And I don't even know who they are or what they are or what they want, but I don't have a host anymore and I'm a lot weaker without one. So I don't really know what to say here or do here and Kayla could be in trouble or getting tortured right now and I'm still here rambling away and not doing anything to help her at all. Whoa, 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 calm down, little buddy. You talk pretty fast, but I, I picked up most of that. I'm a pretty sharp guy, and I uh, think we might be able to help each other out a little bit. See, you got a friend being held by the Foundation, and I too happen to have a friend being held by the Foundation. My old cousin Billy Sharp. Maybe we both go in there together and get them both out. Then afterwards, you tell me in explicit detail everything about whatever you are, and I'll decide whether or not I can build another little buddy like you, huh? How's that sound? Well, I don't really like being bonded to anyone other than Kayla. I don't think she'd mind, but it does seem a little bit weird. Maybe she would mind, though. Maybe she'd be mad. But I also do need to get her out of there, and this sounds like a better option than anything else. But we don't even know what we're up against. Unless you do. I don't. I really don't know what we're up against. What if it's way more than we can handle, and she really is just gone forever? All right, buddy, you gotta chill out a little bit. Old Benny Shop's got all the information we need. And whatever we don't know that we need to know, we'll find out, huh? Now, I need to prep my armor here a little bit more, and maybe you can help me with that. And while we work, maybe you tell me a bit about you, I tell you a bit about me, and we can both stay calm. Then we can go bust our friends out of that place. Does that sound good to you? Because it sure sounds good to me. In a long ramble of words, Charlie agreed, and the two exchanged information to prep for their quest. Charlie told Benny about how he and Kayla were from another dimension, and had been going around to other universes, gathering up other biomechs, like Charlie, who were causing trouble. They'd take them back to Kayla's universe where there was a containment zone for them, called the Bronze Zone that none of them could escape from without a host. But when they'd come through to Benny's universe, they'd appeared in a red pool that transformed into that red egress person and grabbed them both. Every universe had a dimensional nexus that people with the right technology or abilities could use to teleport through into a dimension. And apparently, this universe's nexus was a living being, Red Egress. Charlie was normally physically attached to Kayla as a living cybernetic enhancement, but Egress had separated them and Kayla had told Charlie to run. As he fled, he'd scanned this world's internet for information about the people that had taken Kayla, but most of what he found was speculation and rumors, and there was no concrete information available. And soon after, Charlie had been recaptured as well. Yeah, those Foundation clowns are smarter than I give them credit for. They keep all the documentation either on paper or in computers with closed off networks so no one can hack them, Benny said with sparks bouncing off his face while he tweaked some pieces of his mech suit. They call themselves the Superhero Corrections and Placement Foundation and they're a super shady bunch of folks. And that means something come from me, by the way. I know my share of shady people. My cousin Billy and I, we have borrowed some stuff from him to help build this anti-gravity armor for a client of mine, and they didn't take that too well, and they threw cousin Billy in their best prison, the same place that your friend Kayla ended up just now. The place looks like a regular old store, but it's about a billion times bigger on the inside. The whole place is watched over by one of their heroes, number like 3008 or something, Ike the Jailer. 
He's this crazy tall, freaky strong dude with giant mitts on him who can clone himself over and over and over and over again, and it's his job to keep all the prisoners in line. And keep people like us out. There might be some Foundation folks in there as well, but the biggest problem for most people would be Ike. But he ain't gonna be a problem for old Benny. Benny pulled back from his machine and kissed the air, looking at it. She's a beautiful piece of work, if I do say so myself. He looked down at Charlie. And not that it needs an upgrade or nothing, but you know, if you can do anything to make it better, be my guest, huh? Then it's rescue o'clock, baby. Charlie shifted up onto the armor and did manage to enhance it even further. Then, together, they left the van and shot off back towards the prison. Abigail Apaquash was still out front of the Ikea conferring with some guards, clearly angry and nervous. Her first week at security clearance level 3 wasn't going as she'd hoped, but it was about to get a lot worse. Knock knock everybody, we ain't no Girl Scouts but we about to dosey do our way into your houses anyway, so make room! Abigail and the guards looked up to see a glimmering blue biomech enhanced suit shooting through the air. The guards started to fire but every shot plinked off the suit. Abigail didn't dive out of the way and instead thrust her baton at them again, but Benny and Charlie plowed right through her and smashed through the doors into what looked like a pristinely clean Ikea, but with far more bars than was normal for the store. The room displays looked like they would in any other version of Ikea, but they were fenced off to contain prisoners, who ranged from normal looking humans to mutant beasts. Alright Charlie, it's showtime, let's go find our buddies! Get that tracker going, will you, Charlie? We gotta be able to retrace our steps out of this place. Abigail had leapt back up from being tackled and was charging at Benny as a swarm of Ike the Jailer clones were descending on them as well. Okay, done, I guess, but what if it doesn't work? What if the tracking fails? Or what if the walls move and the path changes? Or what if- Calm down, Charlie. What if doesn't do us any good right now, alright? We'll be fine. Now focus up, bud. A blade shot out of the arm that Charlie wasn't enhancing. You take the fitty coming on the left, and I'll take the fitty coming on the right, alright? Charlie anxiously fired charges of blue plasma at the Ikes while Benny sliced through a wave of them on the other side. But the more they chopped and shot through, the more would charge in out of nowhere. Abigail got close enough to strike again, but now that she'd gotten a closer look at her foe, she played it smarter. She crammed her stun stick right into Charlie's main lens, and with a powerful zap, he started to thrash. I'm overexposed! I can't see! What are they doing? What are we doing? Are more coming? I need 37.82 seconds to recalibrate my vision. I don't know how she did that! Abigail sneered. You're not the first of your kind to come here, creature. Don't think we're not prepared for you- <clears throat> Benny had retracted his blade and grabbed Abigail by the neck. Hey lady, you got a map for this place or something? Uh, actually, you know what? Tell me on the way. Benny shot down a hallway with swarms of Ikes chasing after him. Alright lady, how about it? You got some way to navigate this place or are we gonna have to carry you around till you tell us where Billy and Kayla are? Two Ikes leapt out of nowhere, but Benny spun under them and they crashed into each other as he flew on. Abigail choked, holding Benny's arm. You want a map? How about this instead? Phone, reveal image case file 096. She whipped her phone from her pocket and held it in front of Benny's face, but made sure not to look at it herself. On it was an image of a gangly, grey-skinned man with tears in his eyes. Benny glanced at the image but just kept flying. Ah oh, man, come on lady, 096, that's rude even for a foundation goon like you. But hey, thanks for the phone, huh? He dropped her and snatched the device from her hand and kept going. My lenses have recalibrated. What was that? What's going on? What's case file 096? Don't worry about it and don't look at that image, kid. I'll deal with it later. Now, for now, hack this phone and find out where we can find Kayla and Billy, would ya? Charlie absorbed the phone into himself and a second later said, Oh no, 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 how are you not freaking out right now, Benny? This is so bad, this is terrible. Ah, come on, dang it, Charlie, you didn't do it, did you? What did I just tell you? Without having to say it, Benny knew. Charlie had scanned the 096 file, and worse still, he'd seen the image inside. Now, Foundation Registry hero, the unstoppable Vigor Shy, would be coming for them both. Benny and Charlie continued shooting through the Ikea, slashing and bashing away dozens of Ikes as they flew. But Charlie was suddenly missing far more shots, and Ikes were getting close enough to slam the suit with their massive fists, knocking the flying duo off course. How are you not freaking out? That file says that now that we've seen Vigor Shy's face, he won't stop until he's killed us both and he's invincible, and at his fastest speed he could be here in 14 minutes and 23.09 seconds, and if I attach to Kayla again, maybe he'll try and kill her too. This is so much worse than how we were doing before- Alright, Charlie, buddy, you gotta focus up here. Jesus, man, you're not a human, but you worry about as much as ten of us combined. And for what? 
What does it get you, huh? You're missing shots all over the place now. I need to rely on you, buddy. It's like my mom always said, if you spend all your time worrying about what's gonna happen, you'll be too brain dead to deal with the stuff that's happening right now. And right now, we gotta get Billy and Kayla, right? When that gangly goon arrives, we'll deal with him then. I've had a lot worse things trying to kill me before, and I bet you've had a lot worse things too, right? I, I, I guess you're right. Of course I am, I'm Benny Shop. I'm always the sharpest guy in the room, even in an infinite room like this one. You survived worse stuff, I survived worse stuff, and we're gonna survive this too. Now focus up, or are you not happy to see a friend again? The two crashed down to the floor right in front of a gated but beautifully decorated living room, inside of which was Kayla. Kayla, oh my gosh, it's you, we actually found you! Charlie yelled excitedly while simultaneously blasting away three Ikes, standing guard in front of her cage. She'd been angrily breaking off a coffee tail leg to use as a weapon, but her eyes lit up when she saw her friend. Charlie, what are you, how did you, you know what? It doesn't matter, you did it, you're amazing. Now, let's get out of here. Hold your horses, lady, Benny said, still slashing away at Ikes. He spun around and sliced a hole in the gate for her to step out. It's not time to scram just yet, next stop is Cousin Billy's cage. Your fast talking buddy here and I got a deal going. Kayla grabbed a broken bar from her cage and slammed it against the head of one of the approaching Ikes. I, uh, okay, who's Billy and who are you? Benny shop at your service, kid. Now Charlie, get back on your friend and do that rollerblade thing you told me about. I could carry her, but she don't seem like the getting carried type. Am I right or am I wrong? He was certainly right. Charlie detached from Benny's armor and leapt onto Kayla. He slid down her body and reformed her legs into a hefty set of mechanical rollerblades. Benny just shook his head. Rollerblades. Can't believe you're one of those kinds. Flying around's a hundred times cooler than rolling around, you weirdos. Kayla shot forward, leapt up, and did a spinning double kick, hammering against an Ike, sending him flying backwards into two others. She landed gracefully in a roll. I appreciate the save, Mr. Sharp, but I'm gonna have to respectfully disagree with you on this one. Benny nodded, somewhat impressed. The group shot off through the prison, still fighting off an onslaught of guards, before finally reaching a barred-off kitchen, where a burly, bearded man was laying on the counter. He looked nothing like Benny, but the second he started speaking, the resemblance was clear. Well, as I live and breathe, you see this? It came for me after all, huh, Cousin Benny? Took you long enough, though, huh? Kayla fought off the approaching guards while Benny busted open the bars. Of course I came for you, shops always cover their own, right? Now let's get you out of here, one of these goons set off file 096 on us. Billy just laughed. Ha, <laughs> 096? I wouldn't want to be you, that guy's the worst. I bet you 20 bucks that guy ends up killing you, cuz. Charlie was still alarmed by how casual the sharps were being about the vigor shy problem, but he did as Benny had said and focused on the issue at hand, doing his best not to worry. And he felt that doing so was making him a far better ally to Kayla. He was pinpointing the movement trajectories of all the various Ikes and sending the information to Kayla's mind so she knew exactly where and when to strike. And because of that, she was striking all of them perfectly. Billy hopped on Benny's back and they followed Charlie as he led Kayla back through the exact path they'd taken to get into the prison. It was still a fight to get out with more and more Ikes pouring out of every corner, but they were no match for Benny's armor and the reunited pair of Kayla and Charlie. They finally saw the exit ahead, but there, with five other of the cybernetic guards that had brought Kayla in, was Abigail, again, now holding a massive cannon under her arm. Samsara unit, aim up and fire! She and the whole squad started blasting a barrage of crimson laser bolts towards the escapees. Benny zipped in front of Kayla and activated a plasma shield from his right arm, but one of Abigail's bolts blasted right through it and tore his shoulder armor apart. Oh god, what the heck kind of crazy tech is that? Benny yelled as he flopped out of the air, tossing Billy to the ground. Kayla, we gotta keep them occupied so they don't hurt the sharps. Way ahead of you, Charlie. You aim, I'll dodge. Monopod rifle formation, please. Part of Charlie's body shifted off Kayla's left leg and formed a blaster on her arm. She continued to glide and leap and dodge on just one leg as Charlie, with perfect focus and precision accuracy, shot blue bolts into the shoulder and leg joints of each of the cyborgs, incapacitating five of them completely in only eight shots. Whoa, that was amazing shooting, Charlie, Kayla said excitedly. Charlie proudly aimed up at Abigail next, but Benny shot back in first. That's one heck of a weapon, lady. Mind if I take a closer look? She fired at him and tore another chunk out of his armor, but he pushed through it and tackled her right out of the store. He snatched the weapon from her hand, tossing it aside as she tumbled across the parking lot. Her face scratched up against the pavement, but she completely ignored the pain, leapt up, and pulled out her stun stick again. 
Dang, gal, you got spunk. What are you doing after this? I mean, I'm not in the ladies myself, but I know Cousin Billy's looking for a new Mrs. Shop, you know? Be quiet, you cretin. You think your little escape has solved anything? The Foundation always catches escapees. Your friends here will be back in custody within a week, and you might as well... She trailed off and tapped a device in her ear. Then, she shut her eyes, tightly. Well, it looks like your time is up already, Mr. Sharp. Ah, oh, jeez, I guess it's showtime, little buddy. Hey, Billy, Kayla, close your eyes and don't open them for nothing, all right? Billy and Kayla, who'd just run out of the store, were confused but did as they were told. Charlie detached from Kayla. I gotta help Benny, Kayla. I'll explain later, hopefully. I mean, if I live. I mean, I don't know for sure if this thing's even gonna try and kill me because I'm not human, but you know what? I'm rambling. I'm sorry, I gotta go. Before Kayla could ask Charlie anything, he'd leapt off her and scrambled back onto Benny's armor. He coated over Benny's shoulders, covering and fixing the broken pieces, just in time for their foe to arrive. A towering figure in a thick coat with ripped sleeves tore through the gate without flinching, headed right for Benny and Charlie. A deep hood had been covering his face while he ran, but when he got close, the hood flew off, revealing Vigershai's gaunt, teary-eyed expression. Benny and Charlie flew up into the air, well above the Ikea roof, but 096 leapt up in a flailing jump and snatched Benny's leg. With incredible strength and a wailing cry, he swung Benny down and hurled him into the pavement. Oh, dang, he's quick for a spindly freak. What you got for us, Charlie? I'm open to anything here. Benny shot backwards, sliding along the ground to avoid Vigershai landing on them. He immediately ran at them again, shrieking. Sonic cannon activating and flare shot loading. Let's try both and see what works. Both Benny's arms shifted form, and he aimed his new weapons at the approaching foe. One after the other, he shot a blast of concussive sound and a burst of blinding light. The sound wave pushed Vigershai back a bit, and the light made him close his eyes, but 096 continued after them, knowing exactly where they were without seeing them. Benny fired a barrage of rockets from his back, and all of them hit, tearing through Vigershai's body, but he barely noticed and continued his charge. He drilled his long fingers straight into Benny's chestplate and tore off a chunk of armor. Charlie shifted into a massive fist and rocketed into Vigershai, sending him only a few feet back, but giving just enough time for the now failing suit to putter them across the yard. Charlie! Benny! What's happening? Kayla yelled. Let me help, I can do so- Keep those eyes shut, kid. You see this guy's face and he'll be trying to rip your heart out too. And right as Benny said that, Charlie got an idea. Wait, heart? Heart! Heart, Benny, heart! Humans have hearts and that keeps you alive, and if your heart stops, you're technically dead, right? You sound like you just made some kind of big discovery, bud, but you're just spewing common sense. Is there an idea coming or what? Vigershai shot at them again. They tried to fly up out of the way, but he grabbed them by the waist and pulled the duo down. His tear-drenched face shrieked right at them, and his arm reeled back for another strike. Charlie stammered. No time to explain, you're just gonna have to trust me on this one, Benny. I really hope this works. Charlie took over the suit, tapped into Benny's body, and stopped his heart. Benny's eyes glazed over, then closed. Vigershai looked confused and stopped for a moment, then turned his focus to Charlie. Okay, now for me, system reboot activating, I really hope this will Charlie's lights dimmed to nothing. All went silent except for Vigershai's heavy breathing and weeping. He held the torn up armor for a moment before his own body started to shift back into that of a regular looking human. The armor dropped to the pavement. The now normal-sized man looked around, confused and scared, but somewhat relieved. He pulled the hood back over his head and ran off into the night. Charlie! Benny! What's happening? Kayla yelled, but there was no reply. Against her orders, she crept one eye open to see the two laying battered on the ground of the parking lot, with their foe nowhere to be seen. Charlie, no! She cried, running over to the two with Billy close behind her. She grabbed at Charlie's lens, her whole body shaking. Charlie, Charlie, are you okay? Please say something. But quickly, his lights whirred back up again. R -r Reboot complete. Oh my gosh, is he gone? Are we safe? What's up? Oh, shoot, right. Charlie sent a charge of electricity through Benny's body, and he shot upright in an instant. Oh my god, what in the fancy frick was that? What happened? He looked around and saw that Vigershai was indeed gone. What? How did... Oh my god. Charlie, you ridiculous little genius. Did you kill me? You killed me, didn't you? How long was I dead for? Was that a world record or something? Charlie whirred excitedly. Yeah, well I mean I don't know about the world record part specifically, but I stopped your heart so he'd think you were dead, and set my system to reboot in one minute so that I'd be dead for a bit, so technically we were both dead and Vigershai left. Across the parking lot, hearing those words made Abigail's eyes shoot open. What? 
But nobody survives Vigor Shy. Angrily, she charged towards them again with her baton, determined and stubborn as ever. Charlie shot a taser bolt straight into her chest, and she keeled over to the ground. Jeez, she's a real tough cookie, huh? And she knows where my garage is and everything. Dang it, that's not good. I like that neighborhood. Now I'm gonna have to move back from Boston to Jersey. You could come hide out in our dimension if you wanted, Kayla said. I don't think those people have any way to follow us back, do they? Something clicked in Benny's head, then he leered down at Charlie. You could have taken us to another dimension to hide from that freak, and instead you decided to risk killing us both? Oh, yeah, well, you know, we would have had to come back here anyway, because you live here and that other biomech Kayla and I were hunting is here. So I figured we'd have to come back to this dimension anyway, coming through Red Egress again, and I... Charlie went on and on for a few minutes, trying to justify his decision, but eventually they all let it go, and Benny agreed to come stay in Kayla's dimension for a few days. Not specifically to hide, but because he still wanted to know everything he could about Charlie and the other biomechs. Cousin Billy, on the other hand, decided to take his chances and stay in their dimension. But Kayla and Charlie went back to Benny's garage with him so he could get a working mech suit, just to be prepared for when Benny eventually did have to return to his own dimension through Red Egress. Alright, I'm all good to go. Let's hurry up and get out of here, huh? Why in such a rush, Benny? Charlie said. You think they're gonna come here and catch you before we leave? Don't tell me that you're... worried. Ah, I see what you, you cheeky little guy. I love this little robot you got. He's got a sense of humor and everything. You know, when I come back here, I'm gonna miss having you around, little buddy. Kayla chimed in. Well, I definitely get that. I was only away from him for a few hours, and I missed him a lot. But at least you don't have to miss him yet, right? Charlie activated his return port, and the three of them, together, jumped back to Kayla's reality. And there we have Biomech Benny Sharp Escapes from the Infinite Ikea. The greatest title of any Popcraft Studios episode, I'd say. A few people had talked about in the comments how it would be having Charlie and Benny Sharp interacting together, and that was definitely a lot of fun to act out, and it was surprisingly easy jumping between their two voices. They're both weird, but they're pretty distinct. Anyway, if you're new to the channel and haven't seen one of the two series that this was spawned from, I highly recommend watching the SCP Superheroes episodes or the Animated Mech Armors episodes. Obviously, specifically the Mech Armor ones if you want more Benny Sharp. And you could also watch Biomech Kayla or the other Multiverse Tales episodes, because she pops up in some of those. And some people are probably asking, when is the next Multiverse Tales episode going to be? When are we finally going to see Astra and Terran drawn? Well, funny you ask that, because this episode may or may not have a post credit scene. They all appeared in a burst of light on a shambled street next to the fenced-off Bronze Zone, where so many other biomechs were housed. But despite the bizarre landscape next to Benny, the first thing that caught his eye was something in the air above them. Whoa, what the flip? Way to bury the lead, kid! You never told me that your world had dragons in it! Confused, Kayla looked up above her, and in a swirling cloud of steam was something she'd never seen in her world before. A monstrous green dragon. However many Multiverse Tales characters you think are showing up in that, there's probably more. But besides that, that's all for today. I'm Christian Pearson. This has been Popcross Studios, home of the nerdiest art videos on YouTube. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I will see you all in the next episode on Monday. Not sure what it is yet, but I guess it's gonna be something. Anyway, goodbye.